Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tutor, back today, not with a tutorial and not a complete guide, but to talk about becoming a professional 3D artist. If you're a beginner or have recently started your own journey in 3D modeling, then you probably will want to listen to my 12 points on becoming a professional 3D artist. As of now, I've taught around 250,000 students and this channel, although small, has about 200 plus videos uploaded and around 1.7 million views which we are trying to increase. So if you haven't, please hit that subscribe button if you find this information useful. We have around 30 complete scene guides on the channel so you can see firsthand the level I've reached over time. Now if you're driving or working on heavy machinery or something like that, there isn't really anything in this chat you'll need to see. So you can just go ahead and listen to what I have to say and decide if it's important for yourself. Lastly, I've got to mention everything I say here is my own opinion. And some things you may agree or disagree with, and that's fine. And please, if you can drop your comments down below about what you think I was right on or wrong on, or even if you have a totally different take on things, that'll really help. I just hope that this advice does help some of you out there, or at least sticks in your mind longer than a TikTok video. So please listen to the end and then make up your own mind if this is useful. So how long did it take me to get here? Well, around seven years. That's right, seven long years. But the real question is how long would it have took me if I had this information I'm going to be sharing with you today? I honestly believe I could have cut that journey in half. That's right, half. So without further ado, let's get started on my digital artist beginners to pro guide. The first thing we need to look at is modeling and it's not how to get good at modeling, it's more of stick to modeling. If you want to become a 3D artist, the main point is to be good at modeling. And the quickest way to become good is focus mainly on, well, modeling. Try not to become overwhelmed by the whole process of having an asset in an actual game. In fact, don't even think about the whole process. Just narrow your attention down to learning the basics of creating basic models. Forget about the new shiny software out there or the latest release of Houdini or even Blender for that matter. Instead, turn your attention to everyday modeling, everyday objects. There are a ton of distractions when you're creating models from animating, textures, particle systems, just to name a few. But trust me here, the best thing you can do to cut that learning curve down is just to learn the basics of modeling. You should be able to create any simple building or prop before even thinking about anything else. And I know how tempting it is to want to bring our models to life or see what this piece of armor will look like with an amazing metal texture and battle marks and blood splatter all over it. But leave that till a little further down the road. You can of course add some basic shaders to models, which is basically just simple colors. And that's fine as you can pick it up in a day. And also helps with visualizing how your models look. Last of all, if you're working in Blender, turn Cavity on in the object viewport. This will really help in seeing your models not only improve, but easy to visualize the topology, which is the flow of the mesh. So to sum up, reach a certain level of modeling before moving on to anything else. Learn how to use modifiers to model more complex models. And once you reach a point where simple objects are relatively easy, then we can move on to my next point. To have models that look good, you're going to need to have some textures on them. Now, textures should not be a skill which is taken lightly, with the belief you're going to learn everything in a day. It should be seen more as a journey in the same way modeling is. Honestly, if I was starting out from scratch from now, I would go and either grab a course or look at a complete guide on YouTube that thoroughly covers the UV process. I know for myself at least, this in the beginning seems shrouded in mystery, like some occult ritual. And I also know from the amount of emails I get that a lot of beginners feel exactly the same way. So my advice here is to learn to UV map models and then move on to creating textures. In the beginning, forget about creating your own textures and focus on just creating the shaders using free textures you can find all over the internet and including on our free section in our channel. Once you have a firm understanding of how to unwrap most models and a little bit of knowledge of how shaders work, then you'll finally be able to move on to the more complex stuff like creating your own textures. Now, I'm not going to go into texture creation during this talk as I think it needs its own complete talk as it is a fairly complex subject. The point here is to walk before you can run and I'm laying out a structure to give the best chance of learning quickly. 
So you're going to have to pick early on which direction you would like to go in as regards modeling. What do I mean by this exactly? Well, I'm talking about whether you want to focus on hard edge props and buildings or go down the organic shapes and character route. Trust me when I say this, both are hard to learn, but both have a completely different skill set. Try and decide what you're most interested in in the early days of your modeling journey and then put all of your efforts in the direction you want to go. You'll notice many images on the internet where the building looks great, but the character poor, or vice versa. And this is exactly the reason why I'm talking about this point. For me, I think that buildings are more analytical and technical based, and characters are a lot more creative. If you look at it a different way, just because an engineer knows how to build a bridge, it doesn't mean they will know how the muscles work together in a leg. These both require different skill sets and different knowledge. Finally, the last reason I'm saying this is because once you've decided on your own route, then be proactive in learning all you can. This could be things like getting yourself an anatomy book, observing the way creatures move, or even going out to a medieval castle. In a nutshell, it basically comes down to mechs or warriors, and leads me on to another very important point. When I first started out, at least for the first two years, I would maybe grab one reference and build a model just off that. This is actually a really bad way of creating art. Not only do most of the models end up kind of bland, but also a lot of the time, they end up being a replica near enough of an image on Google or worse, someone else's artwork. So if I was starting out again, I would understand the power of referencing and how important it should be to your own workflow. Grab yourself a free program like PureRev and for every model you intend to create, make sure to have at least 10 references. Get references for everything. This includes aesthetics as well as lighting and environment. If you're creating something to do with the Vikings era, put on some Viking music. Unfortunately for me, I really didn't realize the power of references until about three years into my own journey and this set me back a long, long way. It took one of my lecturers at university to basically force all of us to find thousands of images for the actual models we were actually creating. In my case, it was a violin. This seemed to be quite ludicrous at the time and in the end it kind of was, but it did teach me the value of references. And nowadays, if I'm creating a scene, you can be absolutely sure there'll be at least 50 references somewhere. This actually leads me on to university or full-time academics in general. It will not give you a magic ticket to becoming a professional in 3D modeling. It won't find you a job and at the end of it all, it certainly won't make you any money. For me, university was good in a number of ways that don't seem so obvious on the surface. First of all, getting a degree helps if you want to work in a studio based in another country. It'll be very hard to move to certain countries just with a portfolio. Next is the amount you will learn from fellow students and the amount of competition generated in this kind of atmosphere. It may really help you on your own journey to becoming a professional 3D artist. Saying that, it does come with a fair amount of downsides. And of course, this will not be true for all countries and all universities, but it is something to consider. First, the cost can be astronomical and you need to weigh up if it's worth selling both of your kidneys just to get in. And if you do, how much is it actually going to help you? Most of the time at uni, there'll be some resources and people who most of the time know what they're talking about. But most of the work, and I want to emphasize most of the work here, will be going away and teaching yourself from a course or something on YouTube. The other problem with universities is it's a business. And just like most businesses, it's there to create jobs and make money. This means that you could end up at university where the people who are trying to teach you have left the industry years ago. They may have worked on Toy Story 1 or Ultima Online back in the day, but that doesn't help you today if they haven't been near a PC in the last decade and are not up to date with the way things in the industry today have gone. To give you a good example here would be Geo Notes. This will probably be a big step going forward and it would be great if it was taught by someone that knows them inside out within university. I just don't see this happening too often. I'm not saying it's impossible to find this at universities, but will perhaps be a slim chance. Overall, what I'm saying is university may really help you or may really hinder you. So do your research beforehand, not just on the university, but also on the tutors who are going to be teaching you. University life does lead me on to my next point, which is if you want to become a professional artist in 3D, then keep some perspective. Don't jump on the bandwagon of wanting to create the next World of Warcraft. Although you might learn some things, in the end, you're going to learn much, much more by creating simple models and scenes. There's a good reason for this. Look how many things are repeated in one zone of your own favorite MMO or battleground. Most of it is repetition, and along with this comes disappointment. These games are created with budgets running into the millions and hundreds of people in a team. 
Not only can this simply not be done on your own, but you'll get completely frustrated and it could completely halt your own progress. Big scenes like this also need a lot of knowledge of many different aspects as well. You're gonna to need to know how to animate and rig, build environments and level design, perhaps a little coding. You'll certainly need to know how to keep those pesky frame rates up to actually play the game you imagine. It's an impossible task, so try not to get sucked in. If you wanna learn fast, keep things small, even if you're in a team at uni. Okay, okay, so we all know that person who's forever wanting to show off how good they are at something. Don't be that person, but learn instead to be humble. You're not going to be working on the next Iron Man anytime soon, so put that dream on the back burner. And no, your model isn't good enough to be in the next GTA. When you start out, it won't be good, it never is, and don't expect it to be. But still, put your work out there, make sure to tell people you're a beginner trying to learn. More importantly, ask for critique of your work. You'll be surprised at how much people will say, bro, get good. But put all those aside and you'll have a lot of valuable critique of your work. Don't be one of those people like I was who just wants wonderful comments about how good your work is or people hitting that like button. It's absolutely useless. None of it matters and it won't help you one bit. Don't expect people to give critique but not say anything good at the same time. Just see it more as those people have taken the time out of their day to tell you what you could do better. Also like me in the beginning, don't think you're already so good that only a pro can tell you what's wrong with your work. This is not how things work and it could be someone with absolutely no idea how to model but what they are good at is composition and lighting and just got back from a fashion shoot in Paris. The point here is to listen to all genuine critique of your work and you'll be surprised at how fast you can improve. This once again leads me on to my next point, lighting and composition. If you want to become a professional fast, then you need to understand how to get good at these things early on. If you ever seen images on Facebook or ArtStation that just look like they've been made by some kindergarten kids messing about with Blender on their dinner break, sure you have, we all have, and most of the time it's absolutely nothing to do with modeling or the textures. It's all down to the angle of the shot and how the lighting has been set up. But why would I want to learn this early on, may you ask? Well, it's because without decent lighting, you can't show off your work or even see what you're capable of and how far you've actually come within your own models and environments. When you zoned out watching something on Netflix next time, look at how the scenes are lit and how the transitions between shots work. This will help you a lot because being aware of how these things actually work will really help you in your own work. The amount of work you will see, including some of my own, where the entire scene is let down by either the lighting not being right or the model just sat in empty space is a lot. If you want to make your own models pop, then good understanding of cinematics and lighting is the key, especially if you want to upload your work for people to critique. They'll then start to focus on the little flaws and details and not just this looks rubbish noob, which then will speed up your process of becoming a professional. Simply put, do not start this for the money. There is none, at least for the vast majority of people. Do this because you love being creative or you want to work in the gaming or film industry. And even then, don't do it for the big bucks you expect to make at Blizzard World. This simply isn't true, and most of the time, you'll end up with an indie company down a back alley being paid in pizzas. If you want to get to professional level fast, you'll need to be passionate about what you do and also be fairly creative. The money part of it should come way down on our list. The money will come for sure, but only when you get pretty good with your creations. Also remember, you're not gonna be the next Bill Gates and flying around in private jets by the end. We do this mainly for the love of it and not to be millionaires. If you want that, then perhaps do a business degree rather than a 3D modeling one. Simply put, if you get good, you will make some money, you may even become rich as long as you're good at selling yourself. Please don't do what I see so much on Facebook with the line, I need to learn 3D modeling to make some money. It's simply the wrong reason and it's never gonna happen. If your heart's not in this, then follow something else. You know, 3D modeling projects are a lot like marriages. Do you wanna see it through till the end or give up halfway through? What do I mean by this exactly? And how can I put those two things together? Well, finishing projects can either help or hinder you, and it's a tough decision to make. You know that Orc Isengard mine ripoff you've been working on for the past six months? Well, yeah, time to give that up and start something else. Why? Well, you're not learning anything new. All you're doing is repeating the process you already know. Since this talk is about becoming a professional much faster than I did, then the truth of the matter is to ask yourself, what will I gain by finishing this project and is it worth it? 
This is another reason why we should focus on smaller models and props and not large scenes or the entire cast of Marvel. I saw on Facebook the other day, someone who looks to be actually recreating the entire Terminator film. Now, as much as I love their enthusiasm, this is perhaps a bad idea if you want to learn how to become a professional fast. Since the project is so vast, unless you decide it's going to be your life's work with a manifesto attached, then give it up. Move on, no one will notice, I promise. So after two years of doing everything I laid out here, you may ask yourself, are we there yet? The answer will probably be no. You may know how to model your granny wearing a diaper, but it's not going to help much if it takes you three weeks to get there. You can't be a professional if you don't have the workflow to back it up. So what do I mean by this exactly? If you're passionate, good, and take much of what I have said on board today, are you going to be a pro in two years? And that would be a big fat no. But I did everything you said here, Neil. Yeah, it's still a no. And the reason is because you need another two years increasing your workflow. That's right, two years learning to be a 3D artist and two years on how to cut corners. This is the truth of it. Don't stop learning and don't believe your way is the quickest way because it never will be and there'll be a quicker way that comes along. I'm gonna also lump something else in this part as well. Don't use other people's models unless you can create them yourself. Yes, it might be free or yes, they might look amazing, but if you want to be a pro, you need to make your own scenes and models. You can't be a pro ideas guy or a pro model placer. It just doesn't work like that. On the other hand though, don't be scared to use models if you can build them to enhance your scene or even learn how they were built. I have downloaded many models to see how they did something and this is all part of the process. Right here, even on our channel, we have hundreds of models available for download and I recommend using them for this reason. Just don't be one of those people that's posting AI art as their own. Yes, you may get tons of likes and comments, but where else does it lead you to? Certainly not a professional 3D artist. And with all that said, this is my take on the things I wish I knew as a beginner 3D artist. I know it wasn't 12 points in the end, but hey ho, as an artist, we gotta cut some corners. I tried to keep it as lighthearted as possible while still getting the message over, but I hope you got something out of it and I really hope it helps. No, it wasn't written by ChatGBT, which proves we don't need AI to create interesting views and artwork. So if you're worried about the future, don't be. Now's the time to work on your skills. Thanks a lot for listening, everyone. Please like and subscribe and check out our channel content if you're new here. Happy modeling, everyone.